Hi, everyone. So we have examples for quasi-maximum likelihood estimator. So remember that the last time that we defined this quantity, the u sub i, this is yi minus expectation over the variance of yi. Then if we integrate this u of i, so that is called the quasi-maximum likelihood function. Okay, so example one, the quasi-normal likelihood function. So suppose that y is equal to beta x plus epsilon. Maybe beta and x, x are you know, matrices, but the, just the think about um, maybe just a simple case that beta and x are scalars. And epsilon follows normal, the zero sigma square. So if epsilon follows this distribution, then we can calculate likelihood function. And actually the um, derivative, okay, so um, what is the distribution of epsilon? So equal to y minus beta x. So the distribution of epsilon is, okay, so f of epsilon is equal to, okay, so some function of sigma, so one over square root of two pi sigma, expectation of negative of y minus beta x square divided by two sigma square, okay? So if we take the um, log, the logarithm of the both sides, then we only have the this term if we ignore sigma, okay? So if we ignore but the parameter mu, mu is the beta x, then we differentiate with respect to mu then what happens? Then, um, okay, so this becomes mu becomes just one, and the, this two uh, comes down, so two over two sigma square, so two cancels, and the, this y minus beta x square becomes y minus beta x. So finally, and also the, this negative sign that cancels with this one. So finally, the log likelihood function of y with respect to mu is the y over, um, uh, y minus beta x over sigma square. So actually this is uh, the same as the shape of ui. So if we set mu is equal to beta x and the, the v of u is equal to one and the phi is equal to sigma square, then the q, the antiderivative of this function with respect to uh, mu that is beta x. So that becomes just exactly the log likelihood function. So for normal case, the quasi likelihood function is natural shape. Yeah, so that is often used in estimation. And for this section that we are studying the quasi binomial um, model. So the next example is quasi binomial likelihood. So suppose that the y is the proportion x over m. Maybe for simplicity, you can think the case that m is fixed for now. You can think of the varying m, but the think about m is fixed. Then, um, okay, so y is equal to x over m, and the assumption is that the x follows the binomial, the mp. So m is the sample size. Then uh, what is the log of f of y? So um, x follows binomial distribution. So f of x is equal to m x and p to the power um, x and one minus p to the power m minus x. Right? So um, if we think about, sorry, <coughs> excuse me. If we think about the um, likelihood function of y, so that becomes um, in this shape. Maybe plus some constant, but the, um, yeah, just to think about the uh, x itself. So x is equal to my. So just you transform this into this, then you can see the log likelihood function is this. Okay, then the first derivative with respect to p, so p is the um, 
the expectation of y, right? So the expectation of y is equal to so p. I mean, mu in the um, general setting. So then the first term, first term can be ignored, right? So because we don't have p, the second term, the log p becomes one over p, so my over p. And the third term, this becomes of one over one minus p. So if you just the, um, you know, simplify that expression, then that becomes this one. Okay, so now the, we still have very similar shape to the um, ui. So ui is equal to yi, maybe we just drop yi. So u is equal to y minus parameter p, this is expectation of y, then over the variance. So the variance is um, p1 minus p, and <laughs> excuse me, actually the variance is m over p times one minus p over m. So actually, yeah, so u is the uh, derivative of log likelihood. So the, um, and this is almost exactly the same as original shape, but the u has another parameter u, phi here. So the, this phi gives an additional flexibility to fit the data. Okay, and also I have to mention about the parameter phi. So basically the quasi maximum on the parameter mu or parameter behind mu, such as beta naught or beta one and phi, we have to estimate beforehand. So this is two, so we estimate phi, then after that we fit the quasi-maximum likelihood function for mu. And phi hat is variance parameter. So we, we, can, jet, um, we can estimate this by the chi-square over n minus q minus one. And the um, chi-square is the statistic the defined in the uh, previous the section, that's 3.3. Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, estimation of the quasi-maximum likelihood um, function. And the next um, quantity is the quasi, the deviance. So that we have defined the deviance, relative the um, two times the log of likelihood function. And the uh, Q is already the log of likelihood function. So the negative two we add, so that is variant deviance, but there will also that we the multiply by phi. So this is basically, okay, so um, remember that the Q, so the Q, the definition of Q includes the um, variance of, uh, sorry, the definition of Q includes the phi times the variance of mu. So the, this phi, cancel with the um, phi we added. Okay, so actually this function does not depend on phi. And the, maybe the, you wonder why do we have to put phi? Uh, because negative two times Q is exactly negative two times the log likelihood function. So that's pretty natural, the definition quasi, for quasi bar deviance. Um, and the reason why that we, we got phi um, is um, basically, um, we want to compare the models the, with the sigma square, I mean the phi fixed, the variance parameter fixed. So think about the um, sum of squared residuals. So summation of the epsilon i hat square. Okay. So the residual sum of square is this. And the, if you wanna compare two models, maybe we compare this with the residual square for another model. Maybe I would say maybe another model. So epsilon hat hat i square. Okay. So for this case, um, we can, of course, the divide this by estimated sigma. But the, this isn't really appropriate because basically we want to compare two models, which model has the smaller um, variability. And if, <coughs> excuse me, the model 
two nests the model one, then the, we want to see the how much the is smaller than this quantity. So if we include the sigma hat here, then <coughs> so that basically examines that whether or not the normal distribution fits well for the model one and model two. But usually our, uh, you know, the um, our primary interest is the size of error. So the sigma square should be fixed and uh, we wanna compare just the um, error size. So because of that, uh, we add this the fee. So basically the, that is what we want to calculate. <clears throat> 